Happy Resurrection Sunday, y'all. I know we I know we talk about it. We celebrate it every Sunday, but but this is Super Bowl Sunday. This is this is the day we really commemorate it, and it is an honor to celebrate this with you here and for those joining us online. Can we welcome our online family right now? God bless you. Wherever or however you're joining us here this morning, it's an honor to be connecting right to where you're at. But let's dig right in, y'all. We have uh, an incredible scripture to open up with. Let's go to the, the verse of, of verses, really, uh, that our faith and salvation hangs on. Let's go to Luke chapter 24. Luke chapter 24. I want to look uh, at the first nine verses of this passage that really tell us uh, why we're all here today. Luke chapter 24, verses one through nine. I'm reading of the NIV here this morning. Luke 24, verses one through nine says, on the first day of the week, very early in the morning, the women took the spices they had prepared and went to the tomb. They found the stone rolled away from the tomb. But when they entered, they did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. While they were wondering about this, suddenly two men in clothes that gleamed like lightning stood beside them. In their fright, the women bowed down with their faces to the ground. But the men said to them, why do you look for the living among the dead? Verse six, he is not here, he has risen. Remember how he told you while he was still with you in Galilee, the Son of Man must be delivered over to the hands of sinners, be crucified, and on the third day be raised again. And and verse eight really astounds me when it says, then they remembered his words. Isn't it amazing how you can forget such words? Words that would entail, I'm going to die, but don't lose heart. I'm coming back from the dead. Isn't it amazing how they can lose sight of that? I'm telling you the enemies behind that. We're going to talk a little bit about that today. But it says when they remembered it, they came back to, from the tomb and told all these things to the 11 and to all the others. Let's pray. Jesus, I I thank you that, that this is the day you humiliated hell. They thought they had you nailed to the cross, but Lord, on Sunday, you were not the silent lamb they thought you were on Friday. For they discovered on Sunday you were a lion roaring with resurrection power. So I thank you for who it is that you are. I thank you for what it is that we have in you because you rose from the dead to give it to us. And so we honor you, O King of kings and Lord of lords, on this day of days. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. And everybody said, amen, amen, amen. I I love this verse, y'all. I specifically love the first seven words on this screen right now, Luke 24, verse six. He is not here. He is risen. Where where would your life be without those words? Where would you be without, as, as Pastor Jake so beautifully asked us in the middle of that song, where would you be without the resurrection of Jesus? Would you just introspectively think about that for a moment within your own life? For instance, where would your marriage be? Would you even have a marriage without the resurrection of Jesus? Because how many know, like for me, God had to tell my wife to marry me, amen. We got a, uh, my wife and I got a tale as old as time, true as it. We got a beauty and the beast thing going on, you know what I mean? The only way I'm getting her is if Jesus makes her be with me, amen. Praise God. Uh, where, where would your life be? She hates it when I say that, by the way, because she told me last night, you're just so sexy. Don't even, don't even say that stuff. I don't even know what you're talking about. She didn't say that, but I knew she was thinking it. Amen. But uh, <laughs> where? <laughs> I think I need a ride home today if that would be all right. I kind of do like a look check every now and then, like, how am I doing? And right now, it's not good. All right. But think about where you would be. 
Think about where your life would be right now. Where, where would your kids be without the resurrection? Where would your kids be without he is risen, he is not here? I want to encourage you today with this message to engage in a look around moment and just see all that you have in him. Because it's easy to lose sight of what it is that we have in him. It's easy to lose sight of his promises that, that he gives us, that we hold in our hand, just like those ladies at the tomb. Oh, yeah. See where you are because of him. See how far you've come because of Luke chapter 24 and verse 6. And with that, have confidence in where you're going because of him. Come on, who rose from the dead so that you might have life and have it in abundant measure. My dear friend, all blessing, come on, somebody say all blessing, flows from and is rooted in the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Without it, none of it exists, and may we never lose sight of that. That's why I believe we really need to celebrate it as it deserves to be celebrated on this day. Because salvation is, in heaven and eternity in heaven without the resurrection of Jesus becomes virtually improbable as the law then would be our only hope to attain that. But how many know this is a law that no man or no woman can keep? So we would be up a creek, raging creek, without a paddle or an ability to get back down it. Without the resurrection, Without Luke chapter 24 and verse 6 being in your Bible, without an empty tomb, all that we have in Jesus, all that we have in the context of his goodness and faithfulness in our life simply would not be seen. Amen. I, I, I want you to know, take this personally. Come on. I, you don't got to get your pictures out, but if you could just get your phone again and just hit that. Hit that flashlight, amen, and just let it symbolize if you have invited Jesus Christ to be on the inside of your life, then how many know on the inside of your life, you got the light of the world on the inside of you, and go on and just hold up the light, come on, that's in this room right now. Come on, look at all these people right now that are saying, I got the light of the world on the inside of me. Come on, when you invited him in, how many know the light turned on, and it's not a light that'll ever go out, it's a light that will shine, baby, for all eternity we got the light in us friend think about that for a moment that represents so much more than just a, a light it represents his goodness his faithfulness his promises that are in your life and let us never forget what he has done those, those lights that you saw on, I know your story is incredible. The people around you have incredible stories as well. That's what I love about this church family that we even got to see uh, beautifully represented on that mosaic during that worship message. We, we talked to our worship and, and media and production team and said, let's put some images of what God's done at Journey Church and, and do that during that song. And, and Pastor Schuyler said he didn't have to look far. That's just been what, what's been happening in the last couple of months here in this church. God's so good in the people that allow him to be good in their lives. My dear friend, let us never forget what he's done in your life, done in the people around you's life. He's done like a sister in this church, a young sister in this church named Hannah Walton, young teenager in this church that is just absolutely an incredible young woman of God who was born in a situation and family set of circumstances that, that, that were not favorable at all. They were challenging and that led her to some lonely places and wondering and, and where she belonged, where she could fit in and she needed even foster care and, and so there was a family in our church that said we want to provide that and you know this family in our church. They're called the Lawrences. Pastor Jake who was just up here and, and his wife Nancy, who's our youth pastor, and, and their amazing boys, Isaiah and Malachi, they said, we'll open up our home, we'll open up our arms, and we want to wrap it around you and let you have a place to call home and a family to call your own as well, and, and so therein, she found that place, and we asked Hannah, we said, where would you be without the resurrection, and this is what she said, she said, because of the resurrection, I no longer have to feel lost and alone. 
I no longer have to wonder where I belong. Because of the resurrection, I now not only have a family and a place to call home, I have been able to find my calling. I have a solid foundation now on which to build my future because of the resurrection. How many are thankful of what God can do in a life like Hannah? We got a sister in this church named Denise Peters. She is a, a hero in my life, has been a hero in my life for a long, long time. And, and I've told her this a couple of times and I'm certain she doesn't see herself as that just because of the humility that she always carries and walks with. But I've watched Denise walk through the fiery trials of this life, trials of unimaginable loss. I've watched her walk through and suffer the loss of, 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 of her own daughter and who, who this church loved and wrapped its arms around and showed the care and kindness of God to. And I watched her walk through that. I watched her walk through diagnoses of cancer. I've watched her walk through the loss of her husband. And, 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 and yet somehow she walks through these trials and when she gets on the other side of them, she still has of faith and, and there's an inner joy in her life that is just anchored in Jesus and, and we asked her, we said Denise, where would you be without the resurrection of Jesus and this is what she said because of the resurrection of Jesus I no longer go through battles alone I've been through those battles of grief, she said. I've been through those battles of betrayal. I've been through battles of loss. I've been through battles of sickness, and he has always been there beside me, walking me through. I know that because he's risen, I can make it through every moment of every day because he is there pulling me through. And I love how she ended her words. Because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives, all fear is gone. And I know he holds my life and my future is in his hands. Sister Denise, can you stand up just so that we can honor the woman of God that you are in this place? I love you. You're my hero. God's faithfulness in our lives. We have a brother in this church named Michael Crane who, who was somebody that worked in the business world and, 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 and through a set of circumstances got wrapped up in, in addiction and, and, and pills and, and that ended up creating isolation in his life and, and even destroying the relationships around his life and, and, and found himself at a place where, where, where you're at rock bottom but had nowhere else to look except Jesus Christ and, and that opened the door for him to go to the Dream Center and we've seen God do an incredible work in Michael Crane's life and we asked Michael Crane where would you be without the resurrection of Jesus and this is what he said because of the resurrection I found the dream center where I have recently graduated because of the resurrection, my life has experienced a total 180 degree shift where I can now feel the Holy Spirit working in my life. Come on, instead of addiction working against my life. Because of the resurrection, I've been able to reestablish myself as a more permanent, positive fixture in the life of my children. Come on, look at this dad talking. And in family relationships that were thought to be damaged beyond reproach because of my addiction, but because of the resurrection, God is changing all of that and has even added a spiritual family around my life, and that means the world to me. Stand up, Michael Crane, some more so we can see what God has done in the life of a brother in this church. Amen. And he serves with his daughter in kids' ministry now, bringing a message of hope and help to people. It's amazing. How many are so thankful that, that their lives and your lives are soaked in victory and blessing because of the resurrection. And the reason I ask you that, again, back to the women at the tomb that forgot what Jesus said, is I think sometimes it's so easy to forget all that we really have in Jesus provided to you because of the resurrection of Jesus. It's so easy to either forget or become blind to all that we really have in the context of blessing. And again, I believe the enemies behind that strategy. Jesus mentions many places in scripture about your enemy. Perhaps the most known is in John chapter 10 and verse 10 where Jesus calls Satan, calls the devil, the thief and says he only comes into your life. In other words, just know his intention before he arrives. His intention, he only comes to steal, kill, and destroy. And that's not like door one, door two, door three. How many of that's, Jesus is exposing his process. 
because to destroy, that's, your, your life's destruction is, is his inevitable cause. And it often begins with him stealing first. And I believe part of that steal strategy that he comes into our life with is to steal your ability to see all that God has done, has said, and is doing in your life. I believe he works feverishly hard just to get you to become blind to all that you already have in your hands provided to you by a risen Savior. My, my wife the other day was, was uh, getting ready to leave and we were at the house and, and she was looking for her cell phone. And she's like, Jesse, have you seen my cell phone? And I said, babe, I ain't seen your cell phone. And then she said, where did you put it? Come on, how many know where this conversation is going? Amen. And the reason she asked that is because I have a reputation in my family of taking things and I just put them in random places when I'm cleaning up. I don't know where it's supposed to go, so I'm gonna decide where it goes, amen. I don't know if you have a home and somebody in your home that somebody does that, but if you are that person, homies. You know what I mean? That's me. But I did not take her cell phone this time. And so I was telling her, I was like, babe, I, I promise I didn't touch your cell phone. And, she's, and, and so anyway, the conversation was getting really beautiful. And so she's just like, I got, I got to go. And, and, and so she was looking for her cell phone in different rooms. And, and, and finally, she's in the, I hear her in the living room. And she goes, oh, Missy Kiros. And, and do you know where it was? It was in her hand the entire time. Amen. How many have ever done that before? I've done that several times but I didn't let her know that I've done that several times in that moment. So I just looked at her from the edge of the living room, just judging her with my look. Mm -mm -mm. Look at you. Looking for something that you already had in your hand. And, and, and when I was, I didn't say that out loud because if I would have said that out loud, it wouldn't have ended well either, amen. But I said it in my mind. And as I was saying that, just looking at her, just judging her, the, the, the Holy Spirit told me, he goes, you know, you're like that with my blessing. You just walk around looking for blessing like you don't have it and I've already put it in your hands. How many just wish the Lord would let you just judge your family at times and leave you alone, amen. <laughs> Again, the, 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 the enemy works feverishly hard to make you blind to something that you already have in your hand. In fact, I wanna give you four things today that you might just need to Simply look around and see that you already have, that maybe you feel like you've lost. And I want to encourage you on this resurrection weekend, let God use this weekend to remind you that it's not lost. It's in your hand. And the reason it's in your hand is because he rose from the dead to put it in your hands. So number one, here's, here's, here's something I want you to know that's in your hands. Number one, look around and see his care in your hands. His care it's in your life, it's in your hands, and sometimes it feels like we've lost the care of God in our lives, if we're honest. But, but hear me today, his care has been in your hands this whole time, and it was placed there by the Holy Spirit of God because of the resurrection of Jesus, and because of that, it will always be with you. And I believe a reason that it can feel like we've lost the care of God in our life at times is because Oftentimes, we can confuse the care of God or lump it in with the care or lack of care thereof by other people. And let me just say this. That's a mistake to do because people are fickle. All people. I don't care how close they are to you. People will inevitably, at some point or at many points, let you down or fall short of the standard that your soul thirsts to have, that really only Jesus can fill. And don't allow in those moments where you, where, where you may feel like people aren't caring, or even the church isn't caring, or, or, or your spouse, or you know what I mean, those closest to you just aren't caring. Like, don't allow the enemy in those moments to rob you of the reality that even when people haven't been caring to you, even when life has let you down, that God has always been there showing you, attempting with great effort to remind you of his care in your life that he's set into your hands. 
because he cares for you, friends. First Peter chapter five and verse seven, I love this. It says, cast all your anxiety on him. Even your anxieties, your fears, your worries. He's like, I want them. I want to help you with those. And why does he want us to cast them on him, set them into his hands? It says, because he cares for you. Doesn't say cared for you, past. It's, that's an ongoing, ever-present care. So would you just take a quick second and remind yourself of that reality? Because his care, again, provided to you, come on, brought to you by the resurrection of Jesus, cares for you. It's right there in your hands and it ain't going nowhere, so there ain't a need to search for it anywhere else. Just look around, it's right there. Number two, I think something that we need to remind ourselves that's in our hands that you don't gotta look anywhere else for is look around at his power in your life, around your life, in your hands right now. And it's been there the whole time. Jesus has never let you go. Because of the resurrection, hear me, the same power that brought Jesus back to life in Luke 24, verse six, says has been placed in your life and it's never left your life. And the reason I say that is Romans chapter eight and verse 11 affirms that. It says the spirit of God who raised up Jesus from the dead, come on, let's all say those last three words together, lives in you. Come on, notice it doesn't say visits you. It doesn't stay stops by every now and then. It doesn't say goes on Google and VRBOs you for a few days and then checks out. Come on, how many know when, 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 when the Spirit of God checked in, the Spirit of God does not check out? He's with you, friends. He lives in you. And, and, and let me just say this. If he's in you, he ain't a lazy God. He's not dormant in you. He's not inactive in you. Your Bible says that he does not sleep, nor does he slumber. He's at work trying to show his power mighty through you, removing obstacles around you, keeping the adversity of your enemies at bay, where if he wouldn't have, you most certainly would not be here today in the seat that you're sitting in. Pastor, I hear you, but why is it at times that I feel so powerless Why does it feel like life can just so easily and seemingly sap me of every ounce of, of, of strength that I have? Where's God's power in those moments? And man, I think we can all relate to that. But can I challenge that thought with love today in that your weakness is not evident of God's power being absent from you? It's just not being tapped in like we need to tap into it. Matter of fact, God's power is present with you in your weakness. God told the apostle Paul in a weak moment. He said to him in 2 Corinthians chapter 12 and verse nine, he says, my grace is sufficient for you. And watch what he says. My power is made perfect in your weakness. So here's what the enemy tries to do when we're going through weak times and tough times, he tries to get us to blame God for what it is we're going through instead of going to God in what it is we're going through. Because the enemy knows what's in your hand. And so if he can get you to blame God instead of going and tapping into him, man, the enemy knows if you tap into what's in your hand, then he's in trouble. So let's realize what rests in your hands right now. God, I'm sorry. I I may have lost sight of that. Lost sight of something that's been with me the entire time. And the enemy's just worked really hard to get me to become blind to that reality. Come on, would you just breathe out those doubts that you may have had on whether or not the power of God is even working around your life? It is. It's there. Number three, in the same way, look around at his blessing around your life. Because of Luke 24, 6, come on, because if he is not here, he is risen. We are blessed. And because of that, he has always given you what you have needed, hasn't he? Well, pastor, if I were honest, I feel like there's a lot of things I've asked for that he has not given me. Now, I said needs, 
not once. He doesn't always give us what we want. Even if our want is, is in our minds, good and great. But this is where we really gotta walk into a trust factor with the Father that Father knows best. The Father, he is the Father, we are the children, and, and he will always give us what we need, amen? And, and think about this, if he always gave us what we wanted, would that really be blessing? Come on, parents, think about it. If you gave your child everything they wanted and asked for, would you really be blessing them? My wife and I, we got an eight-year-old little girl. And my daughter would be two feet tall if I gave her everything she wanted. Her growth would be stunning because she would have lived on mint chocolate chip ice cream and Starburst her entire life every meal. Well, how many know I can't raise her on mint chocolate chip ice cream and Starburst? I can't raise her on her wants. You see, God's blessing connects his provision to your needs and they are needs that he promised to meet. All your needs, not all your wants. Come on, what does the Rolling Stones song say? Right, you don't always get what you want. I was dead on in that impression right now. Apparently I offended my own kids, amen. That was <laughs> like, dad, that's the line right there. We out. I'd have left too, amen. Come on, Mick Jagger gets it, why can't we get it, right? Philippians chapter four and verse 19, and my God will meet all your needs according to the riches of his glory in Christ Jesus. And my friends, your needs, which scripture says he knows before you do, he promises to bless. But again, the enemy's so crafty and he works so hard to make us blind to the blessing that we already have, and, and, and that's a very wise strategy of the enemy, because if he can get you to become blind of what you have, then of course you're going to lack confidence that God's not going to give you what you need tomorrow. But if you can see what it is that you already have, and you can see his provision in your yesterday, then that gives you a confidence to know that God has not brought you this far to drop you off now, that God will always be a God that meets your needs. He's faithful. He loves you. He cares for you. His power is available there. And because of that, we are blessed people. Amen. Amen. And I was, I was thinking about that even with our needs. Like we're, we bought that property across the street just to be able to facilitate this amazing growing spiritual family called Journey Church. That, that this weekend, I mean, my gosh, well, we, 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 have, we have had and, and are expecting well over a thousand people to be part of this amazing church family experience. In just 15 years of this church history and little old Troy, Missouri. Come on, how many know God's doing a great, great work here? Amen. That's amazing. But man, just to facilitate a, 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 a moving across the street, that's, that's going to cost a lot of money. And so we forge prayer paths. And by the way, those prayer paths are open right now. That We just opened them this weekend. And you can walk to a sign and it says, pray for this and pray for that. We want, to, we want that place to be a place where light shines. And it's just a little over a quarter of a mile path that you can walk and just believe God with us and, and declare the blessing of God over it. But man, I was walking around in this auditorium the other day and I was just kind of struggling like, God, how are you going to do that? Come on, have you ever thought that? Even with a need like, God, how? And that's where I was. God, how? I was, just, I was just struggling. I know we're not supposed to talk about our struggles, right? We, we, we got to tell everybody we're strong all the time, but I was, I was struggling, y'all. Just in a moment, just at a weak moment. And just ask the Lord, I don't know how you're going to do that, Lord. And you know what God told me? He said, look around. I was in this auditorium. He said, look around. He goes, do you remember when I provided this to my church family, he said? He goes, when they had not an ability to get this, he goes, but I provided it. He goes, so what makes you think that I'm not going to provide that like this? He goes, I've already got that for you. Don't worry about that. You just trust me with what I've given you to do today. And I was like, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. And I want to encourage you, trust him. Whatever it is that you're struggling with right now, 
Just trust them. Remember trust falls? Come on, somebody. Right? You just have people behind you. How many would do this before you did a trust fall? Right? That's not what you're supposed to do because that's a, that's a no, I don't trust you fall. Amen. But you just trust that they're there. How many have ever done that before and maybe you got a crazy set of friends and they just, it just did not work out for you? Amen. But, but I watched a reel one time. Uh, they said do the trust fall and the guy fell forward instead of backwards and he broke his nose. How many know? That guy was listening to the wrong set of instructions. Amen. You're supposed to fall back, bro. But uh, this is all God's trying to tell us to do is just trust me. I got you. Proverbs chapter three, verses five and six. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding, which means there's gonna be times where in your understanding it just doesn't make sense. And I need you to fall back on the understanding that I've blessed you. I need you to fall back on the understanding that I got you. I got your needs. That's why I love it, it says in verse seven, don't be wise in your own eyes. Like sometimes it's just, we can be blind to the blessing. Look around at his blessing in your hands. Come on, would you just take a moment and just, I'm blessed. Those pictures that you put up on your phone, you're blessed. Lastly, number four, look around at his presence. Look around at his presence. It's in your hands. It's, it's around your life. Because of the resurrection of Jesus, you have been given his presence, and his presence is always with you. Meaning this, you have never been alone. Let me close with this scripture. Hebrews chapter 13 and verse five. I love this verse in the Amplified, and it says this. God himself has said, I will not in any way fail you, nor give you up, nor leave you without support. And look at what he says after this. I will not, I will not, I will not. Come on, that's three I will nots. How many know he's trying to make a point here? In any degree, leave you helpless, nor forsake, nor let you down. Relax my hold on you, assuredly not. That's a promise for you today. Would you just let that scripture just breathe over your life right now? Isn't it amazing how he is with all of us while at the same time he's with each of us all the time? He is personally with you everywhere you go, friends, along with his care, along with his power, along with his blessing and his presence. And sometimes, like, like Missy did and I've done and, and you, I'm certain, have, have done as well with a cell phone, sometimes we, we just lose sight of what it is that is in our hands that we can find ourselves looking for. And again, the enemy's behind that spiritually. And so to combat those lies of loneliness, ask yourself right in this moment, like, God, how have you been with me even when I felt alone? Some of you, he's already showing you that. I was there the whole time. I've never left you. So trust me, even when you don't see it, I'm right there with you. And I'm working. Come on, even when it felt like everyone around you wasn't with you, God has always been there. So let's allow the Holy Spirit today to correct that if we've lost sight of his presence in our lives. Just look around and see that he's with you right now. Amen. Let's stand to our feet today. Can I say it again? All of these things, his care, his power, his blessing, and his presence are in your hands right now. They're in your hands right now. And and they are there because somebody rose from the dead to put them there. That's how much he loves you, friends. So can we just close today's service experience appreciating that, having gratitude in that understanding and surrendering to that understanding every day hereafter. I, I shared this message with my daughter. 
She's a part of my sermon committee. I don't preach a sermon she doesn't endorse. Amen, I need her thumbs up. And I was sharing this message with her a, f- a couple of days ago. My wife and I were in her bedroom and she was wondering, I don't know how the conversation got brought up to what, we, what I was talking about, but I was sharing it with her. And, and she said, Dad, those, those four things that you said that God has given us, I said, yeah. She said his, his care, his blessing, his power, in his presence, I said, yeah. She said, yeah, Dad, make sure that you tell them <laughs> that those things only work if you have invited Jesus into your heart. And when she said, I was like, My God, girl, you better preach right now. I'm about to get a little pulpit out here for her because she's so right. His care, his power, his blessing, and his presence only find themselves around you if you've invited the one that provides all of those things to you. It's the only way it works. This isn't a self-help message today just to get you to live with a better smile. This is, this is a message that is trying to encourage the relationship that he wants to have with you that maybe you, you've lost sight of in this moment or maybe you've never had before. Maybe unlike Hannah or, or Denise or, or Michael, you've never invited Jesus Christ into your life. And if that's something that you would like to do right now, I invite you to do that right here in this moment. And it's a really simple moment that can happen right there in your seat because he's right there with you in your seat. So would you just, everybody in this room, if you would just in honor of this moment, would you just maybe bow your head and close your eyes? And I just wanna ask you in this room, if, if you're here today and you would like to give your life to Jesus, That's the only way heaven becomes possible for us. That's the only way his care and power and blessing and presence become real to us is if we invite him into our lives to have a relationship with us. Religion doesn't provide that. So listen, church is amazing. It's what God calls us to be part of. But can I tell you, church doesn't save. Tithing doesn't save. Serving doesn't save. It doesn't matter how many scriptures you know doesn't save. What saves is if you give your heart to Jesus. What saves is Romans chapter 10, verse nine says this, if you would confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. It's that simple, friends. And so I encourage you to right now, I, matter of fact, I'd love just to lead you in a prayer. And some of you say, well, what's so special about this prayer? Nothing special about the prayer. It's who you're praying to that's special and the heart that's praying it that's special. And so just out of honor for you in this moment that's praying, I wanna ask this entire church if we would just to repeat this prayer after me in honor of this amazing moment of faith for you. Let's all just say these words together. Can we just say, Lord Jesus, I believe you bled and died for me. I believe you rose again for me. So today I give you me. I give you my life and I receive your forgiveness into my life for all my sin. Thank you for loving me like no one else could and for giving me heaven forever like no one else could. I love you, Lord, in Jesus' name, amen. Amen, if you prayed that prayer and believed it and you prayed it for the first time, can I tell you, you are saved in Jesus' name. Heaven is your eternal home right now in Jesus' name. It's that simple, friends. Come on, if the Bible says that there are angels in heaven right now rejoicing, that even one sinner should come back to come back to the cross. Come on, it says that they're rejoicing. That word rejoice just means party. Heaven's throwing a party for you right now. And if heaven's throwing a party for you, I think we can take another hoot and holler moment for you and just say we love you. Congratulations on heaven forever. Amen. And if you prayed that prayer, man, we would love to know about it. We want to know. There's a little white card in the seat back in front of you. I'd love it if you just, before you left today, just pull that out, just scribble the information asked on there, and and you can just put it in that offering box right there on the way out. That's the best offering you could ever give. It's just your confession of faith. It's just so that we can be a support to you, so we can celebrate with you. We just love what God does. It's like the stories that we all heard. You got a story too. We just want to celebrate with it today, amen. We're going to close this service today with a song. And before we we do, if you're struggling today, 
I know we all look nice. We're all dressed up the best we can. We're all ready to go do stuff, but inside you just, you might be really struggling. And I just ask that you would just allow God, we're gonna sing this song just during this song. I believe a lot can happen just even during a song. You would just allow God to minister to you right where you're at. Maybe you're here today and you're just struggling with, with emptiness. And can I tell you this? Emptiness comes in many forms. But let me just say this. An empty tomb means that you don't ever have to be overcome with emptiness anymore. So no matter what form that emptiness might be felt, maybe it's just an empty heart. You just Maybe you're just like lacking purpose or you're not living in the purpose that you wanna be living and you're just like, oh, I'm missing. Or maybe it's an empty home. Maybe you lost somebody or, or maybe it's, it's an empty bank account. You're just going through financial, economic struggle right now in your life. Or, or maybe you're an empty nester, you know what I mean? And kids have flown the coop now and you're just like, who am I? It just feels empty right now. Listen, whatever the emptiness, please know that God wants to occupy those empty areas with his care, with his power, with his blessing, and with his presence to let you know that he's with you. He rose from the dead to give that to you. So would you just let him remind you of that reality and wrap his arms around you and let his faithfulness be shown to you. Amen. Father, thank you for how good you are. I pray, Holy Spirit, that you would minister to every single brother and sister in this amazing moment, God, of worship. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Hallelujah.